The National Statistical Office on Friday released the first advance estimates of national income for 2021-22 to help the Union Finance Ministry in its annual budget making exercise. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman will table the union budget on February 1 at 11 a.m. The autonomous body in its estimates compiled using the benchmark indicator method said that the GDP may grow at 9.2% in the financial year ending March 2022. It is a tad less than the RBI projection which had pegged the GDP growth rate at 9.5% for the current financial year. Meanwhile, China is expected to grow at 8%. The estimates suggest that the Indian economy can come back to the level of FY20 in the absence of any strict lockdowns. However, the absolute growth in real GDP over FY20 would be a marginal 1.3%. This means that 2 years of growth had been lost to the pandemic. Nominal GDP is estimated to grow at 17.6% compared to a fall of 3% in FY21. It is better than the 14.4% growth used for FY22 budget calculations last February. It means the government will have the benefit of a higher denominator as the annual fiscal deficit is looked at with respect to nominal GDP. A higher growth rate for nominal GDP than budgeted will have a dampening impact on the fiscal deficit as a percentage of GDP. Assuming that all revenues remain the same as estimated in the last union budget, the government can overshoot its absolute deficit number by some 71,000 crore rupees without any change to its fiscal deficit target of 6.8% of GDP. However, the government is spending 3.28 lakh crore rupees over the budget estimate this fiscal. But given the buoyant tax revenues and expected savings from various departments, it is in a comfortable position to rein in its fiscal deficit at 6.8%. Ultimately, all of this hinges on the government garnering an estimated 1 lakh crore rupees with LIC's IPO. Let us now take a look at how key sectors are expected to perform this fiscal. Agriculture is expected to grow at 3.9%, higher than 3.6% recorded in the previous financial year. This growth may be due to the return of workers of the unorganized sector to their villages where they picked up farming during lockdown. Manufacturing is likely to expand at 12.5% while construction may rise 10.7%. Trade, hotel, transport and communication despite showing a high growth at 11.9% this year have still not made up for the output lost since FY20. DK Joshi, chief economist at Kaisal and NR Bhanumurthy, economist and vice chancellor at the Bengaluru based BR Ambedkar School of Economics gave us their views on the first advance estimates. well the good news was is that the overall gdp uh, as well as uh, sectoral gdp in many segments i think has crossed the pre pandemic levels uh, the not so good news is that the recovery is very uneven i think you can't call it broad based as yet private consumption still still trails the pre pandemic levels and i think the contact based services which are also labor intensive they are still 8.5% below the 2019-20 levels so the unevenness of the recovery is uh, is 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 discomforting the indian economy certainly is in a recovery phase and um, and the recovery appears to be broad based um, except for one sector that is uh, trade hotels and communication uh, where uh, it's still below um, the pre covid situation but if you look at other sectors the rest of the sectors actually uh, you know uh, overcome in fact they have done much better compared to the pre covid uh, conditions there seems to be some difference of opinion regarding the nature of the recovery that we are seeing however there is no doubt that touch services are once again facing the brunt of the covid impact so given what we know about the status of the economy now what steps must the government take going forward particularly in the budget well the first and the foremost thing is to take uh, take care of the healthcare infrastructure in the economy so more budgetary spending will have to be allocated for that in addition to that i think the three important things that the budget needs to focus on is one is extend support to the rural as well as the urban economy for the rural economy uh, it could be in the form of uh, manrega uh, spending increased allocation uh, because the employment position is yet to normalize there for urban areas i think the as we talked about earlier the contact based services are still struggling and i think so they will require some kind of uh, support from the budget either in terms of uh, uh, cheaper loans uh, guarantees 
or uh, income transfers to the urban poor. The third, uh, the second thing is that the private investment recovery has been very gradual uh, in India and it will be very cautious also. Uh, so the government needs to keep pumping money into infrastructure. The third issue that the budget needs to address is normalization of deficit over the medium run. This, according to me, should be a very gradual path, and this will allow the government to create fiscal space for spending in critical areas. I think there is a need to continue the focus on government capex uh, program, uh, which they started in the last budget, and they need to scale up, and they need to, in fact, uh, they had a, a medium-term perspective on um, uh, debt and deficits in the last uh, budget, and they must continue that framework. And um, if they continue, I think um, uh, one should be able to achieve uh, the public debt target that they have set in for themselves uh, for to, by the end of 25-26. Um, more than growth, um, uh, for me, uh, the budget, uh, the fiscal policy should actually focus on um, balancing the debt and deficits and focus on the medium term debt target. Um, we are not sure what is the medium debt target uh, that the government has fixed, um, uh, you know, uh, in the last budget, that was one information that was missing. And, and we do hope that uh, this time around, we'll have a medium term fiscal path uh, made it very clear. The bad news is in private consumption. Its share in GDP is still lower than what it was two years ago. The share of consumer spending in FY22 GDP is projected to be 54.8% compared with 56% in FY21 and 57.1% in the previous year. In absolute terms, it is estimated to rise 6.9% though it is still below pre-COVID levels seen in FY20. This indicates that in spite of strong recovery in 2021-22 from the contraction last fiscal year, consumption recovery is still not broad-based. Rising inflation does not bode well either. Meanwhile, investments have begun to pick up. According to the estimates, Gross fixed capital formation's contribution to real GDP is projected to be 32.9% in FY22 compared with 31.2% in FY21 and 32.5% in FY20. Madan Sabnavis, chief economist at Bank of Baroda, says this could be challenging as private sector investment is down and states have been cautious in their capex given the uncertainty on their fiscal balances. Sabnavis says that this number is susceptible to a major revision when the final estimates are released. Meanwhile, government expenditure is seen growing 7.6% this fiscal. While these numbers present an encouraging picture on the economic rebound, the effect of restrictions due to the increasing coronavirus caseload will be known better at the end of this month. That is when the first revised estimate of GDP for FY21 will be released. The release of second advance estimates of GDP for FY22 on February 28th may also lead to revision in growth rates. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.